get the ball out of her hands if they were moving the ball so well. How tough, especially when she starts off that strong, is it to defend that Phoenix team like that? Well, they have so many weapons on the floor. You know, we're just trying to speed them up. We're trying to put us ourselves in a good position to where we can at least turn them over and try to get opportunities offensively. Kelsey had a huge third quarter. What kind of ignited that stretch? And could it have been something that you guys changed earlier in the game to go to, or is it just her finding her spots? I think it was her finding her spots. I mean, we had a good talk, a long talk at halftime with her. And I just talked to her about coming up, stepping up as a leader of our team, and understanding where we were. We needed a spark. We needed a lift. And she was able to come out and provide it for us. Did you get the sense that something was off in the first quarter or half when you guys were down 20 earlier? Was it a missed shots thing? How did you feel the game up that early? Because you guys normally started off game pretty well recently. Yeah, well, one of the things I, I, I noticed is that, you know, we're, we're flat. We came out flat, um, and, and I'm not sure what caused that. Um, one, one reason that I can just just look at just, just vividly is, you know, when, when I seen our, our eyes and I watched this from the bench, uh, it seemed like we were just kind of out of it because of what we were playing. Play a lot better on the road to start games, um, and for some reason, the, the home court today was just a weird situation. I don't know why. We had a solid game on both ends. What did you see that kind of unlocked her? Well, I think the challenge. We set out challenges for both of our rookies, for well, all four of our rookies, to come in and make an impact um, on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. And uh, Queen took the challenge. Uh, she wanted to play. She was excited about playing against Tina Charles. And obviously this is a learning lesson for her uh, in several different situations, several, several different, different instances. Um, so she was able to, you know, compete at a high level for plays and then sometimes uh, she wasn't she wasn't so good. But it was a, definitely a learning lesson for her. It was good. We talked about Phoenix having a lot of the experience pre-game and then you look at the box score and the top two scorers are Tina Charles and Diana Taurasi. Do you feel like that played a factor, just the, the more experienced team, especially at the beginning of the game? Yes. Yes and no. Um, I don't really like to make that an excuse, but at the same time, those those ladies are good. You know, they were able to get in some schemes and put themselves in situations where it was very difficult to guard. Um, and they, they read the court so well. They were trying to trying to put pressure on, on both both of those ladies um, who were doubling. So we were giving up something, and they were able to find open players. So that was something that our rotations were kind of scattered a little bit. Um, and we did some were pretty good. So, you know, we just have to continue to work with Brian and get us. What makes Tina so difficult to the fans this deep into her career? Well, one of the things about Tina is she, knows exactly how to play in the low post. Uh, she knows how to post up. Uh, she knows how to use the proper footwork when you're on the left shoulder, the right shoulder. Uh, she can get into your body. She knows how to make you foul her. Um, and she just, she does a great job of feel. She has a great feel for the game. Offensively, what did you feel like was the issue to you guys just not having a great night on that? Well, I thought we, we settled a lot. We took some bad shots in transition, obviously. Um, and I, I feel like when we were picking roll schemes on the sideline, I think we were picking up our dream to a quick and running into their trap. Yeah. I'm not a defensive end. I know they've talked about it a little bit, but when you are having that double team and you know that's what you're trying to aim for, how do you combat having that one open player because it seemed like they were able to easily find that player on the You know, Tarasi, um, you know, the three point line, or Skylar Diggins Smith was open, and Turner was open for a couple of days. How do you kind of combat that fifth play? Well, I think uh, it's very difficult to combat it when you allow a pass out of the double team to be sharp. Um, so we needed to make the pass off the we need to get our hands higher and it came to pressure on the ball. And that's really the only way that you can, can, can kind of get, get past it. But one of the things that needed to happen is we needed to modify the ball with our rotation person. And they were kind of reading two people and you know, they were kind of choosing wrong. So it 
just some things that we'll look at and take on tape and make sure they're neat. Obviously, you guys have a pretty plan for a day break, but it feels pretty long for you know WA scheduling. What is? What do you feel like you guys really need to hammer in before Chicago? Well, I tell you what, it's going to be good for us because we haven't had a practice uh, consistent practice schedule in a very long time, right. almost since training camp. So uh, we'll, we'll get in and we'll do some offensive stuff and defensive stuff. We'll get our offense going a lot smoother because that has to happen. And then uh, our defensive intensity and focus will have to improve in areas as well. Change of things strategically. Did you find a groove, and, and is that something you guys could have figured out earlier, or was it just a third quarter quick thing? Uh, I mean, you got to paint out the obvious. He was down a lot of points in that first that first segment of the game. Um, and so, you know, Coach Lowe's, you know, brought us in the locker room. We stated the obvious as well, and um, I, I told our, I told my team that um, we got to make them call the timeout in the first couple minutes. And that's what I was doing. I mean, obviously they're all talented, so you gotta kind of pick your boys and make them make tough shots. Um, you got athleticism, you got quickness, um, you got finesse, um, you got good shooting. So, like I said, you gotta pick your boys, and I think our scheme was halfway decent. Um, when the ball kind of went into the post. Um, you know, it was a scheme that kind of like you know, on the dribble go, um, and then for sometimes we just want you know let us hit, let our post play one on one. So um, it was difficult, obviously, but uh, I think we still have some good. Uh, the stretches where it was pretty good. Did it feel good to have a good third quarter even after a first half like that or did you even care at that point? I'll be satisfied when we can win the third quarter in the game. I hate to be that first quarter, yeah. Carlos talked about in the first half you felt like you guys were just flat. Overall, what did you feel, how did you feel about the energy that you guys provided to the beginning of the game? It was horrible. It sucked. It made our fans not be engaged. Uh, I feel like we let everybody down as far as like that first half and the energy. Um, and I think the third quarter was going to be our pick me up, and you know, obviously we made a good run at it. So it's always important to kind of our our for us is start. It's always a start, whether it's the start of the third or the start of the game. We have to be able to hammer down on certain things like that. Um, and uh, it's unfortunate because we finally won the third quarter, but we lost the game. So um, I guess we'll have to see how it goes. Why do you think the offense as a whole tonight struggled to, to produce? <sighs> um, energy. Flow, rhythm, yeah. everything for us was choppy. Um, it was stints where it was good, but it was, a, it was a lot more stints where it was bad. So we got to kind of put it all together. First several times, this is me for the but where you guys set the double team in, and then you end up with, you know, a wide open person on the block or, you know, Trossi out in the corner. And, you know, when you have someone like that, she's going to hit him every time. How how do you just go about playing that double team to make sure that you know they're not getting that easy basket after you know a strong defensive possession for you guys? Um, I think basketball is all about taking risks and the possibility of 50-50. Um, I think we took a risk on going to double and playing the backside pretty well. Um, sometimes it worked. Um, a lot of times it didn't. So um, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of how the game go. Um, our coaches required a certain scheme, and we tried to apply as much as we can. Queen, how do you prepare for someone like Charles? Like, how do you just, what's your mindset going in, knowing how strong and physical and big she is? Well, I definitely um, like to, like, study their moves, what they like to do, their tendencies. Um, you know, Tina's a great player. She's been in the league for a while. Um, so, obviously, she took advantage of the fact that I am a rookie. But um, just, just try to get as familiar with them as possible and their personnel and just what they like to do and try your best to apply that and be physical and just try to make them as uncomfortable as they can. It seems like up until, you know, sometimes at the end of concessions, you guys were playing her pretty tough and you know, she wasn't just out there getting open. And I think off, like offensive board wise, you guys really limited that today. What's that extra step that it takes to just finish out the defense possession? I would say, of course, no second chance points and just making them take tough shots. I feel like they got a lot of easy looks to the basket, cutting, moving without the ball, and of course, you know, kicking out for the three. Um, we just got to be better ro rotationally, rotate and just make them uncomfortable, make them take shots they don't really want to take like they do to us and grab a rebound 
and just go the other way. I mean, it's pretty simple executing the schemes defensively. It's just putting it all together at the right moment and picking and choosing who you want to help off of and what you want to do. Queen Carlos said he challenged you before the game since you were going against him. Do you like going against some of these bigs who've been around for a while, won awards, won scoring titles? Is that something that excites you as a rookie? Oh, yeah, for sure. I love playing defense. I love uh, just getting out of my comfort zone. I love people who challenge me. I definitely feel like Tina was a big challenge. You know, Like I said, she's a great player. She's been in the league for a long time. And so uh, I had a personal goal of you know just trying to make her comfortable and you know, she had a great game, but I feel like definitely one of these days you can do a better job containing her. What's sort of your offensive focus been for growth recently? It seems like you're looking at that to that face of the game a little bit more recently. Is that something Carlos has been working with you on, or what are you focused on? At? Um, I'm just focused on being a complete player, trying to grow my game overall, step by step. Um, the face up has always been there. I've more so showed the back to the basket a little more um, than I had the face up, but I feel like if I can get that face up and that back to the basket combo, then it's, it's going to be a tough, a tough thing to, de to defend. When it comes to just WBA, it's a, it's a league with so many great centers. For you, how do you just trust the process and knowing that you'll just continue to get better by playing some of the best players in the league night in and night out? Well, I have a great support system. The staff is amazing and they work really well with developing me and making sure you know I'm in the gym and how I can fix little things and it's just been really helpful the adjustments been okay hasn't been too hard and so I feel like that's a big a big thing when it comes to developing a young post player like I am is just making sure they have their head on straight and they're in the gym and they stay consistent because those things can definitely help a team win when, and especially when you're throwing defense in that um, that can be a game changer.